In this next section, we'll be discussing catalytic hydrogenation. Hydrogenation is the addition of hydrogen and hydrogen across a double bond. So this reaction requires a metal catalyst, and it doesn't go without the catalyst, where an alkene is converted to the corresponding alkane. So if you have an alkene, such as the one shown here, in, with hydrogen in the presence of a platinum catalyst in this case, we get the alkane a uh, 100%. So this goes with 100% yield. It's a very high yielding reaction, and it's a very common reaction. For example, it's one that's used to create, um, to hydrogenate vegetable oils in order to create a more solid fat. So we get, um, obviously we don't have regiochemistry here because we're adding hydrogen and hydrogen across a double bond. It doesn't matter which hydrogen goes where because they're the same. But we only get syn addition. So in other words, they both add to the same side of the double bond. So they'll either add either both coming out or both going back if, they're, if the double bond is in the plane of the paper. So we need a metal catalyst in order for this reaction to occur because the activation energy is just too high without a catalyst for this to occur. So the activation energy is low enough with a catalyst that we can actually uh, observe the reaction. So in this reaction, a metal surface such as the one shown here, so something like platinum or palladium or nickel, those are all used, commonly used, <coughs> will bind uh, a hydrogen molecule. So the hydrogen molecule becomes adsorbed onto the surface of the metal catalyst. And then when the alkene comes along, it can pick up those hydrogens and just kind of float away. So there's really not a mechanism for this reaction, just that the hydrogens are adsorbed onto the surface of the metal catalyst the alkene comes along, picks up the hydrogens, and floats away with them. That's the way I think about it anyway. And that's why they're added syn across that pi bond, because they're both going to add from the same face. Alright, so if you have a symmetrical alkene, you don't get a pair of enantiomers with this, you get a meso compound because they're both going to add to the same side. So if, you're, if your alkene is symmetrical, then you get the meso compound. Now if you had like a, something to make this asymmetrical, like let's say you had a methyl group coming out here, then you would get a pair of enantiomers, right? So this is no longer symmetrical. Uh, you would get that pair of, actually these are diastereomers, would be diastereomers of each other. <laughs> So again, uh, for this reaction, we commonly see platinum, palladium, or nickel used as the metal here that for the hydrogen to be adsorbed onto the surface of that. But sometimes we want our catalyst to be able to be dissolved in solution. And for that, we have an option of this homogeneous catalyst and this is called Wilkinson's catalyst here, where we have this ruthenium that has dissolved, I mean, that has connected to it these triphenylphosphines, okay? And this can actually dissolve in solution, and we get the same product. We get the um, hydrogens adding to one face or the other of the double bond, okay? So a homogeneous catalyst will, uh, will dissolve in the... I'm sorry, yeah, homogeneous catalyst will not dissolve in the reaction medium. That's like the platinum, palladium, or nickel. And the heterogeneous catalyst will dissolve in the reaction me medium, and so it's uh, sometimes better to get this reaction to work. So let's see if we can do some predict the products. Here we have a double bond, and we have hydrogen and nickel. So this is a very easy reaction to predict. We're adding H and H across the double bond, and we're going to add those sin. So if if we form um, if we form stereocenters, then we get 
uh, the pair of enantiomers. Okay, so in this case, we just added hydrogen to each side. We didn't form a stereocenter, so this would be our product. So I, I left the hydrogens off here. I could have drawn those in. Doesn't really matter. Neither of those are stereocenters because this is uh, a plane of symmetry. Okay, so for the next one, we have what? We have this product. Again, we did not form a stereocenter. So, let's see. So we added H and H. Now I left off <clears throat> some of the hydrogens there. I'm just showing the ones that I added. So for the next one, uh, let's see. Did we form a stereo center? So let's just draw it without. All right. So are either of these stereo centers? This carbon has two hydrogens and then ethyl and the rest of the molecule. So this is the left one is not a stereo center. The one on the right has hydrogen, methyl, ethyl, and the rest of the molecule. So four different things attached. So that is a stereo center. And therefore we're going to have to draw uh, the hydrogen, you know, on a wedge or dash or whatever. So we could have added both of those hydrogens on a wedge or both on a dash, but the one on the left doesn't actually matter. So let's just put this methyl group on our wedge. The hydrogen on a dash and the ethyl group in the plane of the board and then write plus en okay since we've only got one stereo center there we're going to form a pair of enantiomers all right so thanks for watching i'll catch you in the next video